arteries in my abdomen. I guess my omentum is what it, where the arteries were. It's a protective layer over your intestines and your stomach and everything like that. I guess they call it the, I was just looking it up because my wife, I had to ask my wife, I didn't know the tech, technical stuff, but it's like the policeman of your body or whatever, protecting everything, all your uh, internal arteries and everything like that. So I ruptured two arteries in there. Uh, it's a miracle that I'm here, honestly. It's a miracle. They said two minutes longer and I was a goner, so. Wow. Yeah. Were, you, were you doing something when this happened or was? Uh, yeah, I was training for the Daniel Rodriguez fight and uh, actually was the Friday, the last training day before I had to Vegas and I uh, was doing my spar rounds. Got kicked in the first uh, practice round and, you know, it wasn't crazy hard or anything like that. Just kept going and finished my rounds, did great, hung out for a while, talked to the guys, and then it was time for me to head home, which is about a four and a half hour drive, and was driving and, you know, was starting to have some stomach pain and was telling my wife because I was talking to her on the phone and she's like, well, you know, I'll come get you if you want to just pull over so that way you don't have to worry about it. I was like, oh, no, I'll make it. I'll be fine and I'll rest up and be good to fight next week. And uh, then I was driving and all of a sudden, it's like I started tingling everywhere from my head to my toes and then sweating like crazy, like I was just got done with a session and uh, all of a sudden my vision went out and I was on the highway and I was like, I'm telling her like, oh my gosh, my vision went, I can't see, I can't see. And she's like, oh my gosh, you need to pull over. So all I can think was like, okay, just swerve to the side and try to get to the side, feel my tires dip. And that's when I hit the side, you know, the side of the road to stop. So. I did. Thankfully, there was no cars in the way or anything, you know, just, you know, cause any more destruction or anything like that. So got to the side and she's like, call the ambulance. I was like, I can't see. And so she's got a hung up, was trying to call and it just didn't work out. It just, uh, you know, everything, she, they kept transferring her and everything. Luckily, my vision came back. I called the ambulance, pulled off the highway into uh, a parking lot and happened to be a church parking lot. And, um, you know, the ambulance came and got me, and my wife had to talk me in to get into the ambulance because I was like, well, how far is it? I'll just drive. You know, I don't want to worry about the cost of an ambulance ride or anything like that. It was That's stupid. Better. Stupid <laughs> at the time, yeah. Uh, and she, so she yelled at me, got in the ambulance. They took me over there. Um, you know, I was in fight mode. I was 100% in fight mode, ready to go into that fight, camp, you know, that fight. And uh, I guess the way I came off in the ambulance wasn't, convincing enough for them to take me straight into the ER because they wheeled me out of the ambulance and took me all the way to the front registration desk, took me out of the gurney and put me in a wheelchair and said, oh yeah, we're going to get you checked in. I was like, well, I think I need to go in a room right away. And they're like, nah, you know, we're going to get you checked in, you, you know, and they're, they're pretty busy right now. Well, I started to have another like uh, you know, symptoms while I was sitting in the wheelchair, started falling out, felt like I was going to pass out. And, uh, I mean, all I can get out was just like, help me, help me, help me, please, something's going to help me. And luckily, like, the nurse was right there with me, and she was like, oh, my gosh, he doesn't look good. And the other nurse looked at him and was like, rush him to the back. So they took me back right away, and the doctor came right up to me and was like, what happened? And I was like, I got kicked in the stomach. I think I ruptured something. Threw me on the table, cut my shirt, ultrasound right away, called trauma code. We're going to an emergency surgery. I was like, you need to call my wife. She's on, you know, she's driving here. She doesn't know where I'm at. I'm like, we'll call her as soon as you go. I was like, no, no, you need to call her now as they're wheeling me off. So he called her right in front of me. Thankfully, they told him where we we're at, and uh, you know, went right into emergency surgery. I had uh, was almost four liters of blood in my stomach. Uh, they had to pump out. I had to get blood transfusion. They were able to pump some of my blood out and recycle it or whatever, and put it back in. But I ended up having to get like three liters of infusion of blood done, and then whatever they got left of mine. So yeah, it was just it's crazy, man. Uh, you know, my wife got there and just wild it, you know they called she's like they called me half you know I'm on my way and they're like get here as fast as you can and uh so it was it was a close call definitely a miracle and I mean there's a lot to the story and honestly a lot lines up you know God man I mean I'm blessed it's a miracle uh God and angels definitely watching out for me man a lot lined up for it to be perfectly at that time to go to that hospital it's an emergency trauma hospital uh, I would have been life flighted. I was, you know, minutes away from passing. That was the last exit in Asheville, passing that and being in the mountains where I don't really get any service or anything. So, I mean, it's a miracle that I'm here. It's a miracle that I'm able to fight again. You know, they were telling me, no, you know, you can't, you won't be able to fight anymore. We don't know what's going to happen, what can happen to you. Uh, it's going to really be, you know, you could try and see what happens and you, if you can do it, but we don't recommend it. So it's just like, well, 
if it's, you know, if I can try, I'm going to try. I can't just stop and not try because that'll eat at me. So uh, it was a long debate, long talks with my family, uh, my wife, my kids, um, definitely. And it's just excited to be here again. That's unbelievable, man. So I guess uh, just the physical recovery process, was it, I mean, was it a, a, a you know, a process to get back to fighting condition? Yeah, uh, you know, it was, it was actually really weird because it's like they could give me no real timelines or real things to do. Uh, it was just kind of like, okay, for the first 12 weeks, try not to do more than walking, uh, you know, that's it. And then after that, you can kind of start testing things out, doing a little bit more, a little bit more, um, you know, and so it was just, I was still coming off the fight, you know, being going into that fight and everything, I had it in my head already, I'm coming back, I'm coming back, I'm going to fight again, I'm going to fight again. Uh, so I didn't let myself blow up like I did when I had back surgery. You know, I got 240, that was, you know, crazy. So, uh, you know, this, I was like staying, I was like, okay, I'm going to walk as, as much as I can, as much as my body will let me. And then when it comes time, I'll start picking it up slow. Uh, ended up picking it up too quickly and uh, suffered an a internal tear and it set me back so I had to rest and it would heal by itself, not have to have surgery or anything like that again, but uh, set me back and, you know, just ended up stepping back, talking with my coach and we came up with a game plan of things we were going to do, the pace we're going to do it and uh, that we would start and see where we get and then as we go, we just keep a steady pace all the way up until I get, you know, cleared and then from there, we'll continue to keep a steady pace up until whatever fight is. And uh, so that's what we did, you know, little by little, started with walks, started with keeping my, my heart rate uh, below 150, which is a lot harder than it seems. <laughs> you know, go on a run, keep your heart rate below 150. I'm having to stop like a couple steps in, like what's going on here? You know, let me just walk for a little bit or stand still. Uh, so we, we did some different things conditioning wise. We did some things prep wise uh, that really ultimately I think were better like I feel better than I ever have uh, we were able to work a lot of skill things a lot of conditioning things differently to build different areas of my conditioning different areas of my skills so I feel more well-rounded I feel super sharp and uh, I feel ready to go and better than I have before considering all you've been through I mean I guess is this kind of an, an emotional week for you to, to be back here and, and prepping you know a fight week again <laughs> yeah it uh, absolutely is you know keeping it under control and keeping it under wraps you know uh, it's, it's been an emotional ride. It's, it's been a long, long camp. Uh, like I said, I travel for my camps. I'm away from my family. So that's even 10 times harder this time around because of the situation, you know, the risk of, well, you know, hey, tomorrow's not promised. You know, the next couple hours aren't promised. You know, this fight isn't promised. Uh, you know, something could happen. I can tomorrow not wake up, whatever, you know, nothing's promised. So uh, definitely living in the moment more. Uh, so being here again, I mean, at the end of fight camp, it was that alone. And it was crazy because at the end of the fight camp, uh, you know, I reached in my bag, going to head home, everything. I had a great session, everything. Reached in my bag, going home, pulled my clothes out, went to shower, realized that when I changed, it's the exact same clothes that I wore that same day. Same shirt, same everything, because I had a double, I had the same shirt and the one they cut off me, something in the trash somewhere, but... Uh, yeah, it's the same same style shirt, everything. The shorts happen to be the same shorts. I mean, I'm like, what in the hell is going on here? Like, I'm a little worried, you know, but I don't believe in like, uh, you know, oh, this is bad luck if I wear this. You know, we're going to work through it. We're going to get through it. So, uh, yeah, rock that, rock that shirt and, and clothes all the way home. And uh, it was good, man. It was a great weekend with my family. And here's fight week, man. It's been a long time coming. And I'm super excited to be here. It's definitely, uh, it's been a ride. That's awesome, man. On a much lighter note, you went through the multicolor fingernails this week. Was, it, was that the theme? Yeah. Oh, my daughter, man. She picks the colors and everything. Got a little glitter on the pinky, you know, some colors on U.S., Columbia also. So, you know, a mix of everything here. She does it all. I dig it. I dig it. Last thing for me, I guess, you know, the, the battle that you got through to come back. I mean, what's the goal when you go in there? I mean, like, like you said, you got to live in the here and now. So does this change the way you approach your fighting career as well? I mean, like you're not thinking about like rankings or whatever. I mean, does this change like what you're wanting out of a fight or what you're wanting out of your career? Uh, you know, I haven't thought about rankings in a while now. You know, uh, for me, I just, I don't know. Anything could happen. You know, people are moving up the rankings uh, you know, out of nowhere. So not really worried about rankings, not worried about fighting people in rankings, whatever. If it happens, it happens. Great. If they have a number by their name, great. If they don't like the guy I'm fighting, great. You know, I'm going to fight. Uh, I enjoy this. Uh, if I didn't, and if I didn't love this, I wouldn't be here. Um, 
and especially that was a big thing, you know, talking with my family. It's like, you know, dude, is it worth it? You know, I felt, I felt bad wanting to come back. I felt bad wanting to continue to fight. Uh, my family is the most important thing to me. Um, if they don't want me to fight, then I shouldn't fight, you know. Um, they're what they matter most, and their time being with them is what matters most. This is, this is just, you know, whatever. It's something I love to do, for sure, but it's, it's, not, them, it's not that important. Uh, I can make money doing other things where I'm with them all the time, figure something out. But uh, fighting makes it able for me to be with them a lot of the time. So, uh, and I really love it. And so the fact that I love it, talking with them and everything, and this is a way I support my family, uh, and I'm happy to be here and continue to do it. And it doesn't really change how I look at the fight. I'm just going to go in there and live in the moment. I love this. It's fun. I'm going to go in there and have some fun on Saturday. Hey, Brian. So you were just talking about your family. I mean, did your family give you the go-ahead to continue to fight? Yeah, they did. Uh, it took a little, a little more from my kids for sure. You know, they were pretty shook about the whole thing and the fact that it happened in training. Uh, you know, preparing for a fight. You know, they're you know scared. You know, you know, at a time, you know, the thought maybe, well, shoot, maybe I need to be scared about it too. You know, I just never thought it would happen like this or anything. So I almost just died. And you know. Uh, they're the most important thing. So it's just, yeah, ultimately, it was sitting down, talking with my wife, talking with my kids, kind of reassuring them, you know, like, you know, this is not only is fighting, you know, my job and what I love, but like I said, it, it allows me to be with them more than most other jobs, you know. A lot of other jobs, I'm not able to be home uh, for between fight camps and be home all the time and be able to, you know, be with them throughout that whole time. Um, you know, normally I'd be working, you know, nine to five or whatever. So uh, there's definitely, you know, perks to being able to be home with them and everything like that. So uh, if I can continue doing what I enjoy and what I love and being able to still do, you know, the time with them and be, give them all the focus when I'm not fighting, um, you know, I want to continue to do that and be able to provide for them. And, you know, I think they understood after, you know, we kind of broke it down and explained it for them. And I think they're still scared. I think uh, Saturday, you know, they will be scared. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to going in there and, and showing them that I'm going to be okay. Back surgery, ruptured, ruptured um, <clears throat> arteries. I mean, I, you're in the hurt business, but are you, tr are you trying to, like, stay out of the hospital after this fight? <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly, I'd like to, you know, go in there and, and, and make it quick and not take too much damage would be ultimately ideal. Uh, but that never seems to really happen with my fights. So, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Uh, I enjoy it. It's fun for me. So uh, if it turns out to be one of those fights, you better believe I'm going to be in there having fun with it. Speaking of that, I mean, you're opening up the, the uh, main card on ESPN. Um, they put you there for a reason, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, if you watch fights, fighting, if you know fighting, you know that I, I bring it every time and I put on exciting fights, uh, always going for the finish and uh, definitely start up the main card. I think it's to get everybody amped up and ready for the, the main event and everything else. Do you have a prediction? Uh, you know, I, I just truly believe I'm going to go in there and finish him. I'm going to put him away. He's a tough opponent. He's well-rounded. He uh, comes from a great camp. So uh, it should be a fun one. And uh, definitely, if he, he's going to have to bring it. And finally, last Marie, um, I, I saw you, you took a picture with Danny Chavez, and you both are Colombian. Um, I guess just, you know, how did that feel? Yeah, it felt great. You know, we've talked a little bit over social media and stuff like that, so it was great to finally meet him in person and uh, kind of feel that bond. You know, you get that extra energy when you, you know, you feel that from each other, kind of here representing Colombia, representing the U.S. at the same time, Colombian-American. And, uh, you know, we, we feel that. You know, we're both, we're both warriors and... Uh, Man, I'm excited to be on a car with him, and it just it brings a little extra something special. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome back, bud. And oh, thank you. Thank you for taking the time. With all the ups and downs, the back and forth, the, the roller coaster, at what point were you able to, like that key moment that said, life or death, I'm an MMA fighter, and you knew you were going to come back here no matter what? Uh, it was kind of just like, well, Right after the right after uh, surgery, honestly, you know, it was just, that was the plan right away. Uh, it was like I'm, I'm coming back. You know, this isn't gonna hold me down. Um, I'm gonna be back fighting again. Um, you know, obviously there would be tests and trials and you know, setbacks, um, 
But I just, you know, not only for me, I wanted to show my kids that, you know, when something happens, you, just, you know, if there's, if there's a chance, take the chance. Why not? You know, what can ha you know see what can happen. See what, how far you can get. If you can have, if there's a chance, take the chance. Go for it. Take the leap. Uh, you know, so I'm constantly out here, man. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm pushing, and I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm feeling better than ever. Um, this is a special fight. This is a big fight for me. You know, maybe, you know, people look at it and the opponent's not, you know, a ranked guy or, you know, most notable, he's more newer. He's still tough. He's still well-rounded. He's in the UFC for a reason, uh, you know, and he's here and maybe his record's not the best. That doesn't mean he can't bounce back and go on a streak or something. Anybody can. Things happen. Uh, so, you know what? I'm taking he's, he's a dangerous opponent and I'm taking him as that. And, uh, yeah, this is like probably the biggest fight of my career at the moment. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to enjoy every second of it. Excellent. And you know what Jason mentioned to us earlier that he is, to summarize, the best version of himself because he's getting better sleep, so on and so forth physically. So you're getting the best opponent you could. You guys are both like 2.0 of your each Great. Other. Great. I want nothing less. I want nothing less than that. I want him to be at his best. I want to beat him with the best he's ever felt. And I guess my coach brought this up earlier. It's technically 3.0 since I came back from back surgery as well. But Excellent. Not to correct you or anything. I didn't know either. <laughs> and lastly, how great was it to get that reassurance, that affirmation, that the confirmation from your friends and family that they're behind you and that they've, they're going to continue to be with you this entire ride? Yeah, uh, you know, the biggest thing is, is my wife and my kids. You know, I had to have them behind me. And, you know, my wife has always been super supportive. She's been, we've been together since high school, you know, our, our anniversaries next weekend. Um, going on 10 years married, uh, 14 years together, uh, you know, and then so, you know, for her to still, you know, be by my side and telling me like, yeah, I believe you can come back. You know, you can come back. If anybody can do it, you definitely can. So, uh, you know, go for it. And so, yeah, man, that's, that's the most important thing is, is what my wife says, what my kids you know that they're, you know, okay with it. Uh, Definitely the support of my, my friends, my family, my teams. I mean, I've, I've had people tell me, like, hey, you know, don't do it. You know, don't come back. Don't, you know, stop fighting. Uh, you know, it's not worth the risk. It's not worth it. You don't know what can happen. You know, even though you're feeling good now, anything can happen. Well, anything can happen any day. I mean, I can walk outside right now and, you know, God forbid, you know, something happened. You know, I'm, that's it. You know, that what happened to me can happen, you know, and I didn't make it to the hospital or I didn't make it. I'm not here today. So... I'm not going to live my life like, you know, something can happen to me at any second or, and worry about it because it can. It honestly can. We're not promised any second of our lives. So, uh, and that was definitely more of an eye opener for me, you know, it's kind of just going and, uh, but didn't really set me back on it, you know, didn't let me rethink my life as far as like, well, maybe I need to be more careful. Uh, just kind of opened my eyes and maybe I need to live more. You know, do more. All right. Thank you, sir. Congrats on the anniversary and thank good luck you. on Saturday. Thank you very much.